UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has urged Israel to stop its operation in the West Bank, saying it is fueling an already explosive situation. On Wednesday, Israel began what it calls a counter-terrorism operation in four areas of the occupied West Bank, with at least nine people killed. Hundreds of Israeli troops, backed by helicopters, drones and armoured personnel carriers, raided the flashpoint cities of Janine and Tulkarem and other areas in the occupied West Bank. The raids are believed to be the first time since the Second Intifada, a major Palestinian uprising from 2000 to 2005, that several Palestinian cities have been targeted simultaneously. On the second day of the raids, Israel's military says it has killed five terrorists who had hidden in a mosque in the occupied West Bank. In a statement, the military says those killed were hidden inside a mosque in Tulkarem near the boundary with Israel. This follows at least four airstrikes by the Israeli security forces in the Nur Shams refugee camp in Tulkarem on Monday night that left five people dead. These were three Palestinian men and two boys aged 13 and 15. The UN Human Rights Office says three of these people, including the two boys, were killed while they were passing by the targeted house, which was located in one of the small and cramped alleyways in the refugee camp. The UN office has warned that the situation in the occupied West Bank could worsen dramatically if ISF continue to systematically use unlawful, lethal force and ignore violence perpetrated by Israeli settlers. The latest confirmed toll from the UN Human Rights Office indicates that 628 Palestinians have been killed in the West Bank between 7th October last year, the date of the Hamas-led terror attacks in Israel that sparked the Gaza war, and the 27th of August. That was two days ago. The UN Human Rights Office has not only condemned the Israeli forces' increasingly military response in the West Bank, it also maintains that its operations have violated international humanitarian law. A statement issued by the UN Human Rights Office says the ISF use of airstrikes and other military weapons and tactics violate these standards and are resulting in extrajudicial executions and other unlawful killings and destruction of Palestinian homes and infrastructure. The biggest military action in years by Israel in the occupied West Bank has brought the territory into renewed focus. The West Bank so-called because it extends from the west bank of the river Jordan, is a chunk of land partially surrounded by Israel. It is home to an estimated 3 million Palestinians and is seen by international bodies as part of the occupied Palestinian territories, which also include East Jerusalem and Gaza. The West Bank has been occupied by Israel since the 1967 Middle East War. Israel has overall control of the West Bank since the 1990s. A Palestinian government, known as the Palestinian Authority, has run most of its town and cities. Gaza, on the other hand, has been run by Hamas. Israel has built more than 130 settlements, housing about half a million Jews in West Bank. These settlements are considered illegal under international law, though Israel disputes this. The Palestinians have always opposed Israel's presence in the West Bank as well as occupied East Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip and conflict there has continued over the past five decades. Palestinians want the land to be part of a future independent Palestinian state, something backed by the vast majority of the international community, including Israel's closest ally, the United States. But Israel says it will not consider this and that it must always keep hold of some of the West Bank for its security needs. Even as the 10-month-old Gaza war still rages on, the Israeli army has significantly increased its use of airstrikes in the West Bank in recent months. It appears to show a marked shift in the Israeli leadership's assessment of the situation in the West Bank. Since June 2023, Israel has carried out 50 airstrikes in the West Bank, something it had not done since 2006. All but two of these airstrikes were carried out after Hamas's attack on Israel on the 7th of October last year. The Israeli airstrikes have been mostly concentrated in Janin and its nearby refugee camp, a stronghold of Palestinian militants that has emerged as a symbol of resistance against Israeli army raids. Reports say that all roads to Janine except one have been blocked by Israeli forces. Local taxi drivers have been quoted as saying 
that Israeli soldiers have been shooting at Palestinian cars. In the city centre, which is normally bustling and packed with shoppers and traffic, the streets are now deserted, with nearly all businesses shut. People are holed up in their houses, waiting for Israel's military operation to end. Palestinian mobile phone networks are also down. As raids in the West Bank continue, a Palestinian politician says Israel is attempting to bring the war from Gaza to the West Bank. Mustafa Baghouti, the Secretary General and co-founder of the Palestinian National Initiative, a political party in the occupied West Bank, says he fears that this latest military operation constitutes a dangerous escalation. Baghouti says it is clear that the Israeli army is trying to bring the war from Gaza to the West Bank. They are using military arsenal to attack people who are under occupation, which is a grave violation of international order. The UN Human Rights Office agrees that this is indeed a violation of international law. But Israel claims that its forces are targeting terror groups and terror cells in the West Bank. The US has urged Israel to take all feasible measures to protect civilian lives in the West Bank. In a statement, a State Department spokesperson said, We recognize Israel's very real security needs, which include countering terrorist activity in the West Bank. At the same time, we continue to insist that Israeli authorities take measures to protect all civilians from harm. The White House remains deeply concerned about maintaining stability in the West Bank. With the war in Gaza still raging and no signs of a ceasefire, Israel's biggest operation in the West Bank in 20 years is causing international alarm. As we said, the UN chief has said these dangerous developments are fueling an already explosive situation. The European Union foreign policy chief, Josep Borrell, has warned against a war extension from Gaza. The European Union's Commissioner for Humanitarian Aid and Crisis Management has said the situation in the occupied West Bank is deteriorating further and is in violation of international law and human rights. Palestinians say there have been casualties and damage to homes and infrastructure in Janine, Tulkarem, Nablus and Tubas. The Israeli military describes it as a counter-terrorism operation and says it has made arrests and found weapons and sites used by Palestinian armed groups, including a command room and an explosive lab in a mosque. The UN Human Rights Office has said there are daily settler attacks on Palestinians, including settlers physically assaulting Palestinians, setting fire to or damaging their property and crops, stealing sheep, blocking them from accessing their own land, water and grazing areas and forcing them to often leave their homes and lands. The OHCHR adds that the long-standing trend of settler attacks on Palestinians has dramatically escalated since 7th October with the support of the highest levels of Israeli government. And Palestinians in the West Bank live in constant fear. It says the Israeli settlers are getting more and more organized, including by using WhatsApp groups and other ways of communication. According to the UN Aid Coordination Office, since 7th October 2023, 259 Palestinian households, that's 1,547 people, including 753 children, have been forcibly displaced amid incidents involving Israeli settlers. The Israeli media, quoting Israeli military sources, is expecting the raids to continue for several days, which means the death toll is expected to rise sharply, particularly as the cities and villages being attacked are full of Palestinian civilians. Israel itself is describing the assault as the biggest of its kind in the West Bank since 2002, when the Palestinian territory was in the middle of the Second Intifada or uprising. At the time, Israel was criticized for the heavy-handed nature of its response to an initial wave of non-violent demonstrations and civil disobedience. By the end of the Intifada in 2005, Israel had killed 4,793 Palestinians. Israeli casualties are estimated to have been around 1,000. As for the current situation, apart from the new massive operation launched by Israel on Wednesday, what's equally problematic is the fact that control of construction and responsibility for policing in the West Bank is now overseen by two of Israel's most controversial and pro-settler government ministers, Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich and Security Minister Itamar ben -Gavir. Both have spoken in favour of further Israeli expansion within the Palestinian territory and both have been repeatedly accused of supporting settler violence against Palestinian citizens within the territory. And now, with the attacks in the West Bank continuing, Foreign Minister Israel Katz has called for the temporary evacuation of Palestinians from the West Bank, raising the fear that Israel may be attempting to engineer 
the forced displacement of Palestinians from the territory. The question is, just what is Israel's strategy here? Is it indeed bringing the war from Gaza to the West Bank?